If you haven't tried tag nymphs yet, you really need to. Uh, there's been a lot of talk about my blowtorch nymph over the last couple months after it was in Fly Fisherman Magazine, and it's a fantastic pattern. I catch fish on it year round, and especially through the winter lately, it's been just dynamite on some of my local trout. But um, there's lots of variations that you can have on that theme, and I've been thinking a lot about this other variation that I've played with lately. It's a little more black and purple with a, a pink hot spot for the tag. And I was trying to come up with a name for this fly, and recently uh, my son, who's seven, of course, thinks rockets are cool. So we were watching a SpaceX launch, and I thought, of course, this is now the SpaceX nymph. Thank you, Elon Musk. So give a tag nymph a try. They don't look like anything that's in nature, right? Nothing about this pattern is imitative. It's very much an attractor-based fly, but guess what? It attracts a lot of trout. So give it a drift. It's going to catch some fish. Let's get started on this SpaceX nymph. So I have a size 16 hook in the vise here. And this is a 2.3 millimeter bead, but I've also got another one ready here with a 2.8 that I'll finish the fly on so that you can see how they look. Um, different proportions, but they work just the same. One just sinking faster than the other. I have some ADOT black thread here that we're going to get started with. And we'll just lay a thread base down near the back of the hook. And then I have some fluorescent pink glow bright here. And I've just cut it into three strands and paired them up so that I have one long strand that I've cut into three. I don't want any more than three strands. You get any more than that and it just gets too heavy. So I'm just doing a couple wrap, loose wraps and pulling it back under those thread wraps so I don't have to trim it. And then I come to the back and I'm pretty much just putting the scissors flush against the back of the hook and cutting there. I don't want a long tag here. I don't want a big bushy one. This is just supposed to be an accent. It's not supposed to blow the proportion of the tag uh, out of the water against the fly. So it's not supposed to dominate it basically. All right, wrap back up to the front. Tie in some wire. This is small silver wire. Right back up to the front again, and this is iridescent purple uh, Semperfly Perdigon body, and I really like the way this, uh, the purplish kind of iridescent hue this creates over black thread. It's just a single strand. There again, if you do a pinch wrap that's loose, Oops. And then another second one, you can just kind of pull that under your thread wraps and then you don't have to trim it. All right. And then I'm just going to lay a, a layer of thread here. I just want to cover up any remaining gaps where you can still see some of that pink coming through and make the body a little bit smoother so you don't have ridges underneath on the thread. But I'm not trying to create any taper or make it fat. All right, now I'm just gonna do touching turns in the Paradigon body. All the way up the shank. You don't wanna get this tight against the bead. You wanna leave a little bit of a gap there because you need a, some room to put the dubbing and the hackle on. Okay, one thing while you're tying with that Paragon body, make sure you put it somewhere on the desk that you can find it afterwards. <laughs> I don't know how many strands of Paragon body and Paragon tinsel I probably have discarded on my desk or in the carpet here that I'll never find. Um, it's a really easy material to lose because uh, it doesn't, uh, because it's so translucent, when it, uh, you can just not see it on on the desk, especially on my desk. My, mine has a white table and it just doesn't show up. So put it somewhere where you know you're going to see it. Maybe clip it into something, put it on some tape, whatever. Okay, now I'm going to wrap this silver wire forward and just do three, three, you know, three and a half wraps. You could also take the tail off of this and just use that Paragon body and the wire as uh, a zebra midge if you wanted. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some resin on the back of this fly. 
because I want to make it as durable as possible. So I have some solar res bone dry here and I'm just wiping the excess out from around the bottle there so I don't put too much on and go ahead and apply that around the whole body and then just turn your vise upside down and touch the shaft of the brush to that resin and it'll take off any excess and hit it with the UV light for a second alright so that's ready to go now you can just start you, you can do the whole fly in order like this but a lot of times I stage tie them up to this point just so I get used to doing a whole bunch of steps in order so I might do half a dozen or a dozen of them and then I'll switch and do the next part and so I have another fly here that has a different size bead just so you can see it and I'll go ahead and switch to that same size hook one size bigger bead so this is a size 16 hook with a 2.8 millimeter bead so if you need to oversize it for a little more weight this is what's what it's going to look like and I'm just going to reattach that a dot thread and I have some UV black iced up here and I'm just you can see I don't have much that I dubbed onto the thread just enough to make about two turns and I'm still leaving a little bit of a gap in between the bead and the dubbing because now I'm going to tie in some CDC hackle and I have a CDC feather here I'm going to clip off the base of this feather because I don't want the webbiest bits in there and then I'm going to take and cut most of one half of it off as well that way when I wrap this I'm not going to get it overdressed and I'll stroke the the fibers back tie it in by the tip here and then I'll grab my hackle pliers and just make one two turns tie it down and then just apply a little more of that UV dubbing the black eye stub basically just another turn there and now grab some super glue this is Loctite brush on super glue so I just put a little bit on the thread do a couple of wraps and then a three turn whip finish and then just seat it all in there and that is pretty much it except for just trimming this hackle so you'll see that the CDC is awfully long right now now you could fish that and I'm sure the fish wouldn't care in fact you might even give you some more movement um, but it's also going to slow your sink rate so I take it out of the vise and I hold it in my hands and I kind of pinch all the fibers of the CDC in my right hand so I trap them and then I come to the edge of my fingers here and just pair them together and I break off those fibers and I'm breaking them about even or just a little bit longer than where I have the tail or the tag I guess and then let me see it back in the vise now I've got proper length CDC fibers and I can use any CDC hackle with any size hook really and make the fibers as long as I need them to be to fit that hook and that is the finished SpaceX nymph uh, it's a tag nymph in line with uh, the flies like my blowtorch um, another color scheme this black and pink scheme is a really um, popular scheme in uh, Europe and I really like this variation of it with the Paragon tinsel that uh, shines through on that back end uh, but this is a fly that cuts a nice dark silhouette in dirty water so it can be really useful for dirty water but it's just good in 
any conditions as well. I've used it a lot this winter and caught a lot of fish on it. And I'm pretty sure it will uh, be successful for you and your rivers too. So give it a try and uh, I know you're going to enjoy it. Thanks for watching this tactical fly fisher tutorial. Uh, we're going to go catch some fish here in just a second. But before we do, if you got some value out of this video, what are you going to do? Please give us that thumbs up, that like on the video, subscribe to the channel and hit that little bell icon and that way your phone will let you know when we post the next video. And um, we appreciate all the support. And after, uh, after you watch this, if you need some materials to tie the fly or anything else, come on over to tacticalflyfisher.com and we'll get you taken care of.